Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel. I, I'm a stay-at-home mom and I am homeschooling my three children. If you are new to my channel, I say welcome to you and I hope you stay around. So if you'd like to hit that subscribe button, I would love it if you were to do that. Today our video is going to be a homeschooling video, but we also do cleaning videos, cooking videos, outfit of the day videos, all kinds of things that just make our household run smoothly. Today in this video is the top five mistakes that we've made in our homeschooling journey. So if you'd like to see the mistakes that we made that are at the top of our list, please stick around. Number five is being too serious. As much as that sounds pretty simple as far as being too serious for homeschooling, that is a huge issue when you are homeschooling, especially when your children are used to the traditional school arena. They are going to go into homeschooling with a little bit of a different view than children who have always been homeschooled. Number one, their home is a place where they relax. It's a place where they unwind and they unschool for the day. And so turning that your home into a, a turning your home into their primary classroom takes a little bit of a sense of humor because things can go wrong very quickly if you do not have a sense of humor. In the very beginning, I felt that I had to be this strict disciplinarian. Not that I was hard on them as much as I couldn't be mommy at the time that we were schooling, but understanding that my role was not just to be their teacher, but to be their, their mom and their teacher. And so that had to be a balance. And so to fix that problem, what we did was we unschooled. We completely just took time off from being around other children, other families, even homeschooled families. Because unfortunately, the homeschool arena, when you are going out and doing different things during the day, you find that there are so many homeschool families around you. But the competition in the homeschool arena can be, it can be high. So that's something that you have to pay attention to as far as whether or not um, it's something that works for your family or not to be around other homeschooled families and whether or not you it adds a measure of competition to your homeschool that you are actually trying to get away from. So that was something that um, we had to learn as far as just not taking things too serious, not too seriously, not feeling that, okay, well, this family is doing this, so we should be doing this. It really, it can't happen that way. You have to go with what is making your children learn the best that they possibly can. And that pretty much is where it has to end. Of course, you have to set guidelines. You have to um, set different rules in your home, but I don't think that that's unique to homeschooled families. I think that is something that happens across the board. So number five is not being too serious. And number four is realizing that you do not know your children as school kids. <laughs> that was a big eye opener for me. I did not know my children as school kids. I, well, my husband and I call it cutieing when my children kind of bat their eyes and they do something that they're not supposed to, but then because they're cute and they're cuddly and they're, oh, my baby they cutie people into thinking that they're actually not doing the wrong thing. When they were in public schooling, they had teachers that loved them and it made it easy. And because they were not children who would misbehave or if they did something wrong, they knew if I talk to this child's parent, they are going to make sure that this right here doesn't happen anymore. And so they got away with cutieing their teachers a lot. So when they got home, <laughs> I had to realize that with their schooling, they tried the very same things with me and I had to realize these children are trying to cutie me into not really working up to their potential. And so I had to definitely make sure that I set a standard, knew the standard that they were able to meet and actually make sure that they meet it so that they were not cutieing me into working less than they should, working less putting less effort into their work than they should be. And that was something that I had to learn with my children. I didn't know them as school kids. I knew them as my babies. <laughs> Whereas I volunteered at their school from the very first day that I dropped them off, I 
I didn't know them as school kids. And so learning them as school kids was a big thing. So number three, listen to the cues of your children. When something is not working for your children, or on the other hand, when something is working for your children, definitely listen to the cues that they are giving you. What works for one of your children will not necessarily work for your other children. And so you have to definitely listen to the cues that they give you. If there is a way of learning that they thrive with or thrive on, it only makes sense to go with it because the end result is your child will learn exactly what you're trying to teach them. You cannot try to conform to the standards that other homeschooled families are going by because what works for another family may be the complete wrong thing for your family. So understanding that the cues of your child is what you have to go on is a very important thing. Number two, overthinking. I was so nervous when we started homeschooling. My children, when they were in public schooling, were doing very well. They were, they were all, both of them, there were only two of them that went to public schooling. They were both honor roll students. And so to bring them home and not have them meet that standard was something that scared me. I can only say it that way, it scared me. And so I overthought their curriculum. The first year that they started homeschooling, I actually spent the entire summer before their first year of homeschooling, planning their curriculum and planning their year. I planned from day one to, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, to their, to day 90, I believe. I did, I think I did the first 90 days of school. In my planner, everything was sketched out, everything was planned, everything was exactly the way it was supposed to be, and the first day of school the very first day of school that completely fell apart because it was not realistic. During the course of a day, my children, children in regular um, public schooling or the traditional schooling arena do about two hours of work. I had them scheduled for work from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. according to their regular schooling pattern. That was so unrealistic. It was absolutely ridiculous. It's, that is what I planned things to, that, that's how I planned their school day, but it was just completely unrealistic. So what I had scheduled for their first day of school should have actually taken place in the first week of school. So yes, I had to undo absolutely everything so that I could actually make it a practical schedule for my children. Once I learned that, things got a lot easier because I really just, I was overthinking absolutely everything. Our number one mistake that we made in our homeschooling journey, well, I made, it was me who, who made this mistake. It was not allowing our family to be our family. I was so nervous to have my children all of a sudden start, start to underperform because they are at home that I really just, I was looking at every single homeschool family, making sure that we were measuring up and. Um, watching everything that had anything to do with homeschooling, watching homeschooled families that were out and whereas there were so many things that were working just fine for our family, it was, it was almost as if I was never standing still. And that is a huge problem when you're homeschooling because if you are always trying to keep up with another family, you will never be able to settle down into your routine that works for you. And that is a milestone or a place that you do have to come to when you are homeschooling. It is so important. So for me to allow everything that was happening around me to influence what was happening in our home and in our homeschool arena, that was me not really ever settling down. And if I'm not settled with what's happening in our home and it's constantly changing, there's no way for my family to thrive because Number one, of course, things are always going to change. Your children are getting, your children are getting older. They're learning new things. They're, they're kind of becoming whoever they decide that they are going to become as, a, as an adult. And so <clears throat> things are going to be constantly changing. But as far as the routine of their learning, that is something that has to be constant once you find something that is working for them. But that was not something that I did. I was switching and switching and switching. And then I realized 
I have to stick to what works. When something works out for my family, works out for our schedule, why would I take it away and change it because I see something else? That's not good. It's it's just not good for your family. And so once I realized that and I settled down with what exactly works for us, whether it's something that someone else absolutely hates or not, if it works for my family, that's what we are going to do. Our biggest concern in the course of our day is making sure that we're not doing anything that violates any of God's laws. We are not doing anything that's going to tear down our family in the long run. And after that, it's just kind of, if it works, just let it keep working. And that is, it sounds really simple, but it's something that it took me quite some time to figure out. And that was a huge mistake for us. And I'm sure that if you are homeschooling, there were lots of mistakes that you made in the beginning. And if you'd like to share them down below, I would love to read them because yes, I would love to learn from your mistakes the way you can learn from my mistakes and learning what not to do in your homeschooling journey. Thank you so much for joining us today and I hope to see you again soon. And then I'll see you next time. Bye guys.